Just a single from the over. It's 20 without loss. Katic threw it into double figures. 13 from 20 balls faced. Uh, Shane Watson's made just five from 17 balls. So life not uh, straightforward for the batsman. Shiny new cricket ball will still uh, seem early on while it's proud. That's close. That's very close. And here comes a finger. They decided to bowl straight. Who am I talking about? Don't bowl straight. That's gone. This is the problem for Simon Katic. He gets so far across his stumps that if he misses it, he's usually plum LBW. Had the benefit of the doubt a couple of occasions at Lords, but not so here. It's a very important early breakthrough for Pakistan. Simon Katic trapped LBW by young Mohamed Amir. He goes for 13. It's 20 for one. An early outing to the crease for Ricky Ponting. Opening partnership did a much better job at Lords, but he has an excellent record at this ground. Only four innings here, two half centuries, two centuries. Complete contrast to what he has done at Lords. He'll be happy to get away from that ground and to be at Headingley. Hawkeye suggesting it just hitting leg stump, but that's close enough for umpire Rudy Kurtzen. The slow left arm. Well, not interested this time. You can see the early shake of the head. Ponting, in spite of that good record here, is vulnerable early on. Lunging at the ball there. He got well forward. That will have helped to dissuade the umpire from raising the finger again. Is mighty close. Does he hit that? No, says Ian Gold. And Watson is out now, LBW. Success for both Pakistan opening bowlers in the space of an over. Australia rocking here at 20 for two. Warning everyone, wow, bang. Another wicket for Pakistan. There's a quite a sedate start, but this last couple of overs has just turned the corner. Shane Watson's taking a long time to get off. Just wondering, he sort of held his bat there, whether he thought he got an inside edge, but it looked pretty adjacent. It's definitely hitting the stumps. It's just whether he got a little tickle on it before it. Australia lose their second wicket, 20 for two. So Australia, 20 for two. Michael Clark comes in to join his captain, Ricky Ponting. Two LBWs in the space of an over and both the out as well got rid of both the openers the last one to go Shane Watson plumb to Mohammed Asif here he is now into Michael Clark just enough movement around isn't there a little bit of swing a little bit of seam good decision this from Ian Gould Watson it's a loose stroke really I think he's uh, half forward hit on the shin and it's going on to hit um, middle and off nowhere near hitting it just plumb yep with you I'm not sure why he was sort of hanging the bat around maybe it was just disappointment than anything else it was a, a nipping back a little bit cherry it was a beautiful cherry it was absolutely salmon trout it was plumb that's not far off either little bit of bat maybe Clark saying no I don't want to run and pointing his bat down the pitch may have been going down the leg side as well it's just starting to seem a little bit a little tickle I think the umpires had a good morning they've made a case you said Paul a good decision on Ricky Ponting I think it was first ball to say not out a couple of excellent LBW decisions that's close I tell you not close enough for Rudy Dismissive shake of the head, 23 for two. Let's have another look at this. 
Oi, oi, oi. Well, it just looked out, didn't it? And a dismissive shake of the head from Rudy Kurtz. And Clark's got away with one there. Oh, there's nowhere near with Bat. He might have might have hit his pad, which he has, but that might have saved him, really. It was quite, it was just the timing of everything there where the bat hit the pad, the ball's hitting the bat, the pad as well. It, I think Rudy might have thought that he's hit it, but it's definitely hit the pad first. I reckon Michael Clark's got away with one there. That's how uh, poor he is against the short ball. Don't get it quite right. And he'll uh, smack it away through mid wicket. It's quite going to make the boundary. But Ponting playing that with ease and plenty of time. Yeah, and you notice even with the pitch, just sat up a bit on the wicket too. The last few overs have really nipped quite quickly because of the fuller length. This one, a bit short, and look how much time Ricky's got. He does normally get into a good position, but I think the slowness of the pitch means he couldn't really cream it. A lot of uh, Yorkshire players and luminaries here today to, for the opening of this uh, Carnegie Pavilion. Brian Close, bottom left. Jeff Cope just hiding behind Dickie Bird. All you need is Jeff Boycott in there and then there'll be all sorts of eruptions going on. Well, we talked about last though about the mindset of a batsman when the ball is nipping around like it is at the moment is that they tend to want to go for everything. Seen a couple of player misses on these last two deliveries. And it's been the length. There's been a flash at a big full drive and then one that he thought was short and wide, Michael Clark, for a cut which sort of nipped back. Batting's quite difficult. Bowled in, full ball, Clark plays all around it. Very full ball, but this is really good bowling by the Pakistan bowlers. The trio of seamers have got a wicket each now, and Australia 27 for three. Yeah, reward for a good wicket. Look at that, the nip back again. We saw the first ball shape away, nip away, play and miss. Second ball a bit shorter, play and miss from a cut. This one straight at the stumps again some good rewards for attacking the stumps again nip back well bowled umar gull michael clark gone for three australia 27 for three michael hussey the new batsman good record very good record averaging 52. now first ball though at lords to umar gull court slip and coming in to face something of a crisis here 27 for three australia Michael Clark was bowled, but the ball's leading up to that. We saw the first one, a fuller one, and we talked about the mindset about throwing the bat out. The second one's a bit short, didn't get through. The third one, boom, decked back in at the stumps. Some rewards for attacking the stumps. But we talked about the mindset. You get anything full that you want to chase, and suddenly you get a little bit loose. That one there, Michael Clark, might have wanted to play a nice, tight, forward, defensive stroke at it. But because it was full, and he was in his mind to attack to try and get on top of the bowler, which is the right mindset. Umar Gull just outdid him with one that nipped back. It was a good delivery. Oh, oh what a ball that was. What a ball. Shake of the head from uh, Ian Gould. I would say Ricky Ponding has no idea what's happened to that one. He's been phenomenal this morning, Mohamed Asif. They can't believe it. 
they all went for the caught behind shout bowler didn't look too aggressive but what a delivery missing the outside edge missing the off stump squared him up oh by a mere inch or two and uh, Ricky Ponting was uh, on the walk couldn't handle the scene there extension of arms the bat way ahead of the front pad wonderful piece of seam bowling from Mohammad Asif well Tiddle that first delivery of the over it deserved to clip that off stump didn't it really it was one of those ones where you know the length was absolutely perfect must have missed well must have missed the outside edge of the bat by not very much and the outside of the off stump by an inch or two more but the shape of it was absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> Miss Cude, taunting very quickly, making sure he gets off the strike. Well, he would have done but for some sloppy fielding. Went for the quick single, got the overthrow, so he's back on strike again. Australians have been uh, very aggressive, even today on a tricky pitch. They've tried to play shots, even to the good link deliveries. And batting conditions were expected not to be. Yeah, that's uh, a more solid defensive shot. This has been the thing, hasn't it? That Australia's been going at the ball as if it were an Australian-type pitch, as if it were Australian conditions, going hard at the ball when it's full, playing through the line of the ball, and when it's doing things, that counts as a high-risk strategy. And that's the other problem. Uh, Michael Clark, we know, wants to bat uh, the way he wants to bat on all kinds of pitches. He's aggressive, as is Ricky Ponting. We need somebody like uh, a Michael Hussey. Oh, that's close enough to call. Given he was walking, Ricky Ponting knew that he was dead in front of the stumps. Asif with a huge grin on his face. This is an excellent performance by Pakistan this morning. Fourth wicket down. Well, Ricky Ponting will need someone else to clear up this mess now. He's thrust that front pad down the pitch. He's. Uh, off balance here, it's hit him right in front of uh, middle stump, would have hit leg stump. That finger came up ever so quickly, that would have been knocking leg stump out the ground. This is really good bowling from Mohamed Asif, he's been bowling those away swingers, those away seamers. That one's come the other way and uh, Ricky Ponting is almost off the ground. Well, Australia in uh, some disarray, four down for 29, Marcus North uh, number six today and in very very early it seems made 100 here last year in the ashes test match i uh, have to play really well to do that again given the conditions at the moment given the circumstances but uh, australia in desperate need of someone to get some runs now with uh, both hussey and north now yet to get off the mark confident start good stride forward for marcus north 29 for four at the end of the 14th over this morning Well, smiles around for Pakistan. Here's that wicket again, just coming back in this time, punting, overbalancing, can't get the bat onto it. He's in front of middle, the ball due to hit leg stump. Now, how's this for a celebration? Oh, not good. <laughs> oh, looks like the answer is uh, concentrate on bowling. Lead the celebrations to someone else. Well, this one uh, much more clearly into the gap. So Michael Hussey also now off the mark. It's a long road from here on in, isn't it? 
Yes, uh, this pair would be hoping that Asif finishes soon because he's already in his eighth throw. It's been a long spell for Mohammad Asif and we know that he's not been 100% when it comes to physical.